The thrill of discovering lost cities and civilizations has captured the imagination of explorers, archaeologists, and adventurers for centuries. Hidden beneath layers of earth, sand, and jungle, these forgotten remnants of ancient societies offer a tantalizing glimpse into a past that has long been shrouded in mystery. From the towering temples of Angkor Wat to the sunken ruins of Atlantis, the quest to uncover these lost worlds has inspired countless journeys of discovery, unlocking secrets and treasures that have been hidden for generations. As we continue to explore the world around us, the excitement of uncovering new wonders and unlocking the secrets of the past remains as strong as ever. Welcome back to History in Minutes. Today, we'll be rediscovering a rose-colored lost city. Nestled within the rugged mountains of Jordan lies an ancient city carved from stone, a breathtaking testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of its creators. Welcome to Petra, a marvel of engineering and artistry that has captivated visitors for thousands of years. Where is Petra? Petra, known as the Rose City for its color of its stone structures, is situated roughly midway between Damascus, Syria, and the Red Sea, making it an ideal commercial hub in the region. Located approximately 150 miles south of both Jerusalem and Jordan's capital, Amman, Petra's stunning rock-covered architecture and innovative water management system are highly regarded by both historians and archaeologists. These features enabled human habitation in the region, despite the surrounding desert and mountainous terrain. Recognized for its cultural significance, Petra was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. The City of Petra Petra was built by the Nabataeans, a group of Arab Binduin people from Jordan as a trading post. They used it to trade things and became very rich. Later, the Greeks attacked Petra because they wanted the wealth and to take over the city. This was the first time Petra was mentioned in history. During the attack, the Nabataeans fought back and were able to protect themselves from the Greeks by using the mountains around Petra. The mountains acted like a wall and kept Petra and its inhabitants safe. Despite successfully defending itself against the Greeks, Petra was invaded again in 106 AD by the Romans this time. The Nabataeans fought hard, but ultimately had to surrender to the Romans, who then took control of Petra and renamed it Arabia Petraea. For over 250 years, Petra was under Roman rule until an earthquake destroyed many of its buildings in the 4th century AD. The Byzantians, another ancient civilization, later took control of the region and governed Petra for around 300 years. Over time, Petra gradually declined in importance and eventually became abandoned and forgotten, remaining hidden for centuries until it was rediscovered by a Swiss explorer in the 19th century. Becoming the Lost City By the beginning of the 8th century AD, Petra was largely abandoned and no longer a significant location commercially or politically. Although no longer an important city, Petra has been noted by historians and archaeologists for its unique architecture, as well as a specific innovation made by the Nabataean Bedouins that established the city. Given the rugged, mountainous terrain that surrounds it, Petra wouldn't seem like a logical place to build a city. However, the Nabataeans took advantage of this geography as they erected its key structures. The Nabataeans used an early form of rock-cut architecture to create many of Petra's buildings by carving them out of the surrounding stone surfaces. As different cultures, such as the Romans and the Byzantians, occupied the city, they also left their marks on Petra's architecture. The Nabataeans built large and ornate tombs, which were eventually replaced by Christian churches constructed by the Byzantians. The Romans, who ruled over Petra after the Nabataeans, built the Petro-Roman Road, which became the city's main thoroughfare. They also constructed ornate gates in a Roman style to mark the entrance to the city. Some of the most famous architecture in Petra consists of ones carved out of the red stone in a classic Greek style. The treasury, al Kazne, stands at 39.6 meters high and 28 meters wide. Built in 56 BC by the Nabataeans, it is considered one of the most famous masterpieces. For years, the treasury's purpose was a subject of debate, but recent research has shed new light on the matter. Contrary to popular belief, the treasury was not a temple, but rather a royal burial site. Scientists have discovered four graves, believed to belong to a king and his family dating back to the last century BC and the first century AD. 
It is possible that the site contains the grave of Artreus IV Philopatris. The building of the treasury only took a few months, demonstrating the remarkable skill of its creators. There's also the Nabataean Amphitheater. While the Greeks were famous for building their open-air theaters on the slope of a hill, the Nabataeans opted to carve theirs out of rock. Initially, their theater could seat approximately 3,000 people. Later, the Romans renovated the theater, expanding its capacity to hold up to 8,000 spectators. Despite the influence of these later cultures, the Nabataeans' impact on Petra's design and structure remains significant. The resulting blend of cultures and styles has helped make Petra one of the most unique and awe-inspiring archaeological sites in the world. Petra's Water Systems Living in a region with limited rainfall, the Nabataeans face the challenge of obtaining and preserving water. However, when they built Petra, they came up with a revolutionary system of water management. They built conduits, dams, and cisterns to collect and distribute rainwater for year-round use, a crucial resource for their survival. Furthermore, the area surrounding Petra was prone to flooding during certain times of the year, but the Nabataeans constructed dams to control the floods, ensuring a steady water supply for the city. The water management system they developed allowed them to stay in Petra even during times of drought, and it led to better crop yields for the Nabataean farmers. In essence, Petra's unique water management was essential to the city's existence, making it a prosperous center of trade and agriculture in an otherwise harsh environment. Petra Today After the Nabataeans abandoned Petra as a trading center, nomadic shepherds used its stone structures as shelter for several centuries. However, in 1812, a Swiss explorer named Johann Ludwig Burckhardt discovered the ruins of Petra and wrote about them in his travel writings. This discovery brought attention to the unique ruins and they soon attracted the interest of architects and scholars from around the world. As a result, in 1929, a formal project was launched by British archaeologists Agnes Conway and George Horsfield as well as scholars Tafik Kanan and Detlef Nielsen to excavate and survey Petra. Petra has been the subject of numerous discoveries and research efforts in recent decades. In 1993, a collection of Greek scrolls dating back to the Byzantine period was uncovered, shedding new light on the city's history. A number of 152 rolls of burnt papyri were discovered in the old Byzantine church in Petra. Initially, archaeologists were discouraged due to the fragility of the deep black scrolls, which were embedded in burnt debris. However, a protective crust had formed, which preserved their shape even when broken into fragments. The ink that was still intact on a few pieces of papyri helped date the Petra scrolls to the 6th century. The archive contains documents from 528 AD until the reign of Tiberius Mauritius, who reigned from 582 to 602 AD. Out of the rolls excavated by the American Center of Oriental Research, 23 had partially continuous text segments, and 19 had fragments with substantial information. The burnt papyri revealed that Petra was not entirely destroyed by an earthquake in 551 AD, as previously believed, but rather remained a prosperous city throughout the 6th and 7th century. The majority of the papyrus rolls deal with property transactions such as sales, bequests, dowries, and property divisions. These transactions concern vineyards, sown land, orchards, apartments, and stables, providing insight into the world of well-to-do landowners, church officials, soldiers, and other officers. The scrolls provide a glimpse into the daily life and the society of the people living in Petra during that era. More recently, satellite imaging has revealed a large, previously unknown structure buried beneath the sands in the area. Petra's importance as a cultural and historical landmark was officially recognized in 1985, when it was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. However, this designation has also led to the forced relocation of the Bedouin tribespeople who had been living among the ruins. In the early 2000s, Petra was named one of the Seven New Wonders of the World, drawing a surge of tourism to the area. While this has provided an economic boost to the region, it has also raised concerns about the impact of heavy tourism on the fragile ruins. As a result, efforts have been made to limit tourism and protect the site from environmental damage, such as floods and erosion. That's it for today's video. If you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content worth your every minute.